um, American school has just just taken away from them. So as we watch National Cathedral School make their way down the course in race 198, we move on to the aspirational doubles. This one contested between Thames Rowing Club A on the Berkshire Station and Drexel University of the USA on the Buckinghamshire Station. Both crews leaving the start pretty comfortably. And it looks to me, Thames Rowing Club doing all the early running here. They've established a lead. I think they've already got clear water on their opposition. Yeah, that's it. That's a very strong start there from um, Thames Rowing Club. Really pushing away in those first few strokes. It's important to get that, uh, that headway as soon as you're in the race because it, it's not actually a very long course. I mean, I'm sure it feels it when you're rowing. I can't personally say I have done. Um, it but does. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely important to get that strong start. Otherwise, you can lose it in just a couple of seconds. I thought I'd clarify, I haven't actually raced on the Henley women, at the Henley Women's Regatta. Uh, that, that's never happened, but I have raced at Henley Royal. And it's the full course is 2,112 metres, and that extra 112 metres does, you do feel it, I can confirm. But these girls racing over about 1,500 metres. Of course, rowers often train for 2,000 metre courses, so I always wonder how exactly they stagger this race. What do they, how do they go about it? Because obviously the first 500 metres is all about getting up to race pace, you know, getting the sprint in early and making sure that you're in the race. And then you do that, that middle third, that middle thousand, middle 500 metres, and all of a sudden, you've got to think about your sprint for the finish. So it's interesting to see how crews do stagger it. But I don't think tactics are going to need to come into play here for Thames Rowing Club because they have left the Drexel Dragons in their wake. No, definitely looks like they're going for the win in this uh, quarterfinal. They've s just really pushing ahead there as they're going past us. The technique is really good with really long strokes. Whereas the, you can see that the uh, Drexel University double just seemed to look slightly panicky, looking around a lot at bow, uh, which is understandable as uh, they're trying to gauge themselves against their opposition. But I don't think from this position they're going to pull it back too much. There's too much water in between uh, them and Thames. Yeah, you can see from that overhead shot there by the drone that Thames has got a good two or th me nearly three boat lengths ahead um, of Drexel University. Um, but they're still, so they've relaxed their rate slightly since their beginning, but they're still pushing down. And we can now just see the start of the next race, which is uh, KSRV. Nord and Worcester Rowing Club. Yeah, Nord on the Berkshire Station and Worcester Rowing Club on the Buckinghamshire Station. This Worcester crew, is he local for you? Yeah, local rivals for me. Um, I do believe I know one of the girls in this double, so hoping it goes well for them. Um, I know that they certainly have been training hard. I've seen them powering up and down the river down um, on the Severn in Worcester. Um, much anticipated event for them well, one of the girls in the dutch crew who's just about the same age as me 22 she's got a 2k erg pb of 702 which for a girl is pretty rapid that equates in my mind to a 602 male pb that is most certainly a lot faster than my 2k yeah, ergo score pretty <laughs> rapid. i think that's showing there look at that nor double they're looking very very composed very tight as a unit and quite powerful I imagine that 702 PB is helping, helping yeah, them along. You can see that they're just, every stroke they're pushing off, just slightly more and more and more from that Worcester crew. But Worcester are still, still in there, still pushing through. I don't think they're going to bring it back unless anything goes wrong, particularly with the Nord crew. But they're not completely at a loss. They're still holding themselves in there. Yeah, trying their best to stay in touch, but this Dutch crew... Well, I think it would take a brave man to bet against them in the entire competition. I don't think I've seen a, a better double on the course today. They look very, very good. Plenty of power. Plenty of tenacity and composure at the front end, which is always important in a double. 
So they are certainly very strong, very together. They look like they've been training for a long time together. Must be 201 aspirational doubles. Uh, this is indeed 201. I'm joined uh, by Camilla. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Or hola, should we say. <laughs> um, the Mexicans are on the course. This is race number 201, academic double skulls, Club Espana, Mexico, Ipswich Rowing Club, Sudbury Rowing Club. And on the Berkshire station, it is. Club Espana, who look to be in front. Yeah, but quite a close race at this point, Martin. Um, the composite are really giving them a run for their money in these early stages. And actually, in fact, I think they're starting to push through now. Um, and as they come outside the window of the commentary tower, I think the composite from Ipswich is starting to push level with the Club Espana double and perhaps even inch a couple of feet in front of. But I really can't call it, Martin. Mm, I concur, <laughs> as Leo DiCaprio said in the film. Uh, do I? Yes, I think actually they are beginning to move through there. That's, uh, well, it's championship double skulls. You would expect them to be- Aspirational uh, double skulls, may it? I, I beg, correct I'll, you? I'll, I'll beg your pardon. As but no, and look, you can see now that the, the Ipswich composite now has about half a length, uh, the Ipswich Sudbury composite. And uh, I think they've timed that really nicely. And, and you can see that although the, the starting speed of the club, a Spanish double of the Mexican double was quite quick, the cruising pace that this composite have, um, they're just letting the boat have a little bit more run around the front end, especially in the sort of last couple of inches of the stroke. Yeah, you can join in this bit of um, banter that we've been having about the fact that it's 1,500 metres, lots of crews trained for 2,000, for the 2K, and that it's a different tactic, if you like, that, that's involved. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely think it is, because a, a lot of crews will break a race down into four sets of 500 metres and have a cruising pace in the middle thousand and sort of sprint at either end of that. You obviously have to throw that out the window a little bit when you're on a 1500 meter course because if you if you are caught napping or you sprint too long 
you actually then lose that nice cruising speed in the middle and lose your composure a little bit. And that's what this crew's done really well, is they've kept their composure, even when they were put under pressure off the st start, yeah. even though it's a shorter course, um, and, and remembered to bring that gear down um, even though it's a shorter race in total. So I think it is important to still have that step down onto the race pace and not, you know, it's not that much shorter than 2,000 metres. Um, so it's Ipswich and Sudbury that still lead this race as it's moving now away from the boating racks and the enclosures down towards the finish. You and I have both been out on the back of the launches um, commentating <laughs> from there. It's, it's interesting, isn't it, that there's been quite a few mishaps, put it that way. And then it's almost like the, the more fancied crew, the faster crew has been the one that's had the mishap. And they're, they're then trying to catch the crew that sometimes was four or five lengths. Mm. It was really interesting and it was really um, a, a bit of an eye opener as to when you're very close to them to see just how cool and calm because it, 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 it's sometimes not very forgiving when you hit lumps of wood known as the boons. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, we saw that with that TSS crew earlier, actually, who had that fumble really early days and had a lot of work to make up. And they did it, I think, um, from memory. They did catch it up. But um, as you say, it's a short course. Um, it is quite unforgiving. Uh if you do make mistakes in the early stages, they sort of amplify and echo the further down the course you get. So yeah. um, no room for mistakes here. And uh, with it being side by side and knockout, funny things can happen. Yeah, and uh, what we've got here is the top right-hand screen. That's the finish of the Sunbury, Sudbury, rather, Ipswich Composite race. They look as if they're going to go through. Their opponents will be the winners of the next race, which is on the course, Lee Rowing Club and Nottingham Rowing Club. This is, uh, again, fairly tight. I think there's about a length in it. Looks like Nottingham have a length lead over the Lee. Yeah, maybe just over, actually. And uh, that's a good position to be in at this point in time. Remember, um, you'll be able to maybe just see where we're sat in that commentary box just there at the top of your picture. Um, that's where we are. So the crews are just coming past us now. And uh, with clear water at this early stage, about 500 metres gone, um, you can just look back on your opponent and that in this case is Lee Rowing Club and take control uh, and in a side by side race it is quite pressurising for the crew that's behind um, to try and keep contact with that crew over their shoulder and sometimes that can sort of lose um, it just causes them to lose that bit of composure we were talking about earlier in fact so um, the Nottingham crew have just got up and sat up at this point. I suspect that would have been their race plan from the start. And uh, in this aspiration of double skulls, this is the quarter final, I believe. So they'll be going on to a semi final tomorrow morning, as we say, to, to um, face the winners of that previous race, um, which, as long as that's confirmed, will be the Ipswich Sudbury Rowing Club composite. And uh, they've now managed to create about a length of clear water, um, Nottingham Rowing Club, over the crew from Lee. You know, just looking at these images here, they're coming now to, it's roughly about the halfway point where you see the control caravan. And they'll call this probably at about two lengths, I would think, to Nottingham. Yeah. Which is pretty good lead. I mean, if the Lee are going to do something, they, they ought to really do it now. They can accelerate, of course, these smaller boats. And I think that that will come as they get outside of the boating enclosures and, and towards Upper Thames is we do see that turn of speed happening in doubles and singles, especially the pairs sometimes as well, if they're going in a straight line. Um, that turn of speed, because there's only two of you in the boat and the boat's quite light, you can pick it up and start to motor it really, really quickly. So I'd say if you're within a length and a half um, as it comes into the last 500 metres, it's certainly doable to make that distance up um so i wouldn't completely write off lee rowing club but uh, as they come now you can just about see upper thames there in the distance yeah. so, so that's about 450 500 <laughs> meters now and it's nottingham still out in front and, and nottingham haven't been challenged yet at all um you know it's not like they fought for this lead off the start so i think they'll have a couple of gears in them if even if there is a response from lee I certainly think Nottingham would be able to fend it off quite easily. So um, Nottingham Rowing Club have always produced quite good double skulls. I think their junior crew